Welcome to Lumion 9 Tutorial 9. In this tutorial, we will look at lights, light properties, and light processing effects. To do that, we will use the same scene that we created in a previous tutorial, where we place the house in the scene of the Farnsworth house. In general, you place lights just like any other object. Go to the Lights category, go to Place, and here you have a selection of lights with different properties. Let's select the first one as an example. Click to place it. You don't see it because it is positioned at the ground level. We need to move it higher up in the air. We could have done this also by pressing the H key before placement, but we can always change it this way. You can see how the light lights up the environment. It can be a bit difficult to place lights as they don't have a 3D object around them. The 3D object of a light needs to be placed separately. This can be done in the CAD software or chosen from the Lumion object library. In this case, the house already had three light objects. The trick is to position the light exactly at the right location below the light object. Let's start again and fast speed forward. You probably want to copy this light as the height is now correct. We can always look at the position XYZ coordinates. The height is the Y coordinate. Make sure the next light has the same Y coordinate. There is an easy way to copy paste objects that you placed previously. Shift, Alt, and drag the object with the mouse. Here you can see what happens if you press the Alt key. Move your model and leave a copy in its place. We make now a copy and place it at the other light positions. Look around a little bit. Do the same thing for the last one. Shift, Alt, Mouse, Drag. Move the light to the third position. When you click on the light, a property box appears here where you can set the brightness, cone angle, show the light source, automatically activated at night, so at daytime it doesn't light up, but at nighttime it does. If we now make it nighttime, it switches on. Random is what you use if you have many lights, for example, city lights on the buildings, and in a day-night animation, you don't want all of them to switch on at the same time. For the shadows, there are a few options, medium, high, and dynamic. Dynamic is what you choose if you have animated objects in the scene. The shadows that are casted by this light are recalculated for every frame of a video animation. This takes more processing time, but for animated objects, this is necessary to have the correct shadow be casted. For static objects, this is not needed, and you can choose medium or high, dependent on your preference. In this case, I changed one of the three lights, while they should be identical. You can select all three, and then change the properties of all three simultaneously. Here we can set the color, and we have another way of setting the intensity. There is another way to create a light in Lumion at exactly the correct 3D light object that you created in your CAD software. Let's first delete these three lights. Now we go to SketchUp, where we create the 3D model. I selected the three light bulbs. Now I can export these objects as a separate file. It needs to be a Collada file. Now we go back to Lumion. The position of the house is over here. The lights file will need to be placed at exactly the same position. Go to Import, find your file, click on OK. You can see the yellow line representing the three lights through the roof of the house 
while the crosshair is located outside the house. Click to position it. It is not exactly at the right position. How do we move it to exactly the same position as the house? Go to Select. Select first the house. Press the Control key. Select the lights. Go to Advanced Properties and click on Align Positions. Now they are exactly positioned at the same spot. We could have typed in the coordinates manually as well. Here you can type in coordinates so you can take them over from the house. Now we move back into the house. Click on the lights to select them. We can replace these three lights with Lumion lights. Go to Advanced Properties. Click on Place Item on Nodes. Go to Lights. Pick the light you like. And as you can see, the three lights have replaced the original object. They seem to be rotated incorrectly, however. They are angled 90 degrees to the right. How do we fix this? Go to Rotate. Move the pitch 90 degrees. For a precise number, double-click on the slider. Backspace. Type in 90. Enter. Now the lights are exactly positioned and rotated. In general, it is good practice to place your lights on a different layer, so you can easily switch them on and off. In this case, we can switch them on and off in the property box as well, using night activation. But if you would like to experiment with different lights, you can create a new layer for each different type of light. How do we move them to a different layer? Go to the top, find a layer which is not already used, Check that by switching it on and off. Call the layer Lights 1, for example. Press on this icon, Move Selection to Layer. Now you can switch them on and off by clicking on the layer icon. To create a new light option, click on another layer, as objects are always placed on the active layer. Call this layer, for example, Lights 2. If you now place objects, they will automatically be assigned to this layer. But if you didn't do that correctly, like we saw before, you can always switch them over easily. Now let's look at a few other light types. Go to Lights, Place, and switch from Spotlights, which we used before, to Omni Light. This is a light which radiates in all directions. Change it up in height. If we switch off the sunlight and make it night, we can see that the whole house is lit up by this light. Let's look at another light type, area light. There are two presets for that, square and line. The line light corresponds more closely to a TL light. Place an area light. Change it up in height. We cannot scale it using the normal object scale slider. In general, lights cannot be scaled. There is another way to still make the area light larger in the Properties window with Width and Length. Let's see how this looks at night. What you maybe notice is that the area light does not cause shadows to be casted. Only spotlights cast shadows. Place a TL light, a line light. They offer a quick way to light up, for example, an office environment but realize you are missing out on the shadows. There is another property here, the falloff rate. How quickly the light diminishes in intensity on a distance from the light. About shadow casting. Let's add an object below the lights. At the moment, we don't see any shadows being casted by the lights. That's because shadow calculations take some processing power. In the renders, shadows will always be processed. In the editor, you can see them by pressing F8. They're not that bright, because a lot of light comes from outside, which is also taken into account for creating shadows. We can make it now very dark, so he sits in a dark room. Pressing F8 now again shows the shadows a bit more clear. Let's make an image. We didn't yet use any of the styles or effects. To show you what they do, there are a few effects related to the lights and shadow processing. The shadow effect improves the quality and control over shadows. 
you can set the soft shadows and fine detail shadows on or off. Here you have more parameters to tune. There is hyperlight and global illumination, which are other algorithms to process the light. Hyperlight, for example, also takes the emissiveness of material into account. Let's see how that works out. Here, we can clearly see the difference between the different light options. This is spotlights, shadow effects, without hyperlight. Spotlight, shadows, with hyperlight. Omnilight, without hyperlight. Omnilight, with hyperlight. Area light, area light with hyperlight. It is a good idea to look at some of the example scenes included with Lumion to get an impression on how other people handled lights. For example, Villa Wagner. Here you can see some other scenes where lights played an important role. Let's experiment a little with light effects outside. First, a render without any special effects. It's always a good idea to add the shadow effect. Shadow processing will improve now a lot. You can already see it in the preview. Now let's add another effect, which is useful for outside, skylight. With this, the lighting of the sky and clouds is taken into account. If you use skylight, the clouds will have a quite significant effect on the overall quality and look and feel of the image. Another effect that we can add here is hyperlight. This processes also the light reflected by other surfaces. It takes a bit more processing, but let's see what happens. The difference with hyperlight and without is the area here is processed better because of the reflection of the surfaces over here. You don't have to use it, but it can improve the quality. Inside the house, you also see more lighting up of the ceiling thanks to the hyperlight. Play around with the effects. For example, we can now add a real sky sphere. We can change the position of the sun with this slider to be roughly at the same position as we had before. The sun is a lot lower, so we need to pick a real sky sphere which has a higher sun position, this one. Let's do some image renderings with this effect. you can see quite a significant difference. Not only because the sun is in a different position, but because we use the sky sphere with a lot of clouds. This image looks a bit more dark, which can be corrected again with some color correction effects. Let's look how the style preset works out. For example, realistic. Take away the real skies effect, take away all the changes that we made in the effects, this is the realistic style. Quite a big difference because in the realistic style, some color corrections were also used. This concludes Lumion 9 Tutorial 9, where we looked at lights, light properties, and light processing effects.